亲爱的雨群们，大家好，我是你们老朋友大伟哥。本次前瞻特别节目，依旧是由我来担任节目的主持人。不知不觉间啊，元神也陪着大家走过了一段漫长的时光，从蒙德到枫丹，这一路以来啊，我们不仅经历了许多精彩的冒险故事，也邂逅了形形色色的角色伙伴。再过不久，元神也将迎来公测三周年的日子了。为此，我们项目组同学也准备了丰富多彩的游戏内容和活动情报。呈现给每一位旅行者，希望旅行者们无论是在游戏内还是游戏外，都能够感受到三周年的节日氛围。那么事不宜迟，先让我们一起来观赏版本 PV， 看看新版本啊会给我们带来哪些精彩的内容吧。The fortress of Meripede may seem like a prison, but it should in fact be regarded as a gathering place for exiles. I will arrange false charges against you so that you may secretly investigate inside the fortress. The truth is, this place has a lot of hidden rules. All of our informants, including the ones that had infiltrated the guards, suddenly vanished. Something bad will happen during lunch on the third day. A mysterious box? A bottle of crimson liquid? So, you know those pipes that make strange sounds? Don't ever, ever go near them at night. Sooner or later, all will pay the price for their arrogance. Negotiations have broken down. Please leave, ladies and gentlemen. If Risley does have a plan, what could it be? After being away from the sunlight for so long, even the terrifying depths of the sea start to feel like home. Uh, I have to... Have we entered into the next stage of the prophecy? And now, another catastrophe will soon be upon us. I mourn this turn of events. Difficult to express my emotions because I cannot fully understand myself. I'm confident that we'll find the meaning of our existence one day. Rumors saying that you were born from calamity, you inherently bring danger to those around you. Why should we trust this species from who knows where anyway? Melazines can't be trusted. That goes for Nervalet too. There's only one thought on my mind. Only Innocent. through bloodshed can the debt be repaid. Risley. Where did you take my siblings? Even if the truth may not be pleasant, since they have no way to dispose of the leftover remains, they have ways to transform them into other forms and keep them in the fortress forever. It beggars believe just how carefree you have been. From the very beginning, you, the god Fosalor, have failed to take action. Who are you? What are you trying to do? Please don't kill me. I'm begging you. Is this what justice means to you? Answer me, Nubilet! You will see much in the human world, from the delightful to the depressing. And one day, when you have dwelt among humanity long enough, you will be placed to bring judgment over all as a spokesperson for Fontaine's past. It is unnecessary to hold me in such high regard. Visitors, welcome back. 
不知道有没有和我一样的旅行者，每次看完新版本的 TV 啊，都会对其中出现的角色和故事非常的好奇。所以今天啊，我也依旧是邀请了项目组的小伙伴，我们的战斗设计师叶黑，来给我们介绍新版本中的相关剧情以及角色的情报。非常感谢大伟哥的邀请，旅行者们大家好。这次会由我来向各位旅行者介绍剧情和角色的相关内容。哎，欢迎欢迎！哎，自从做完这个四点零的模式任务以后啊，我一直想知道之后的发展。哎，趁着这次机会啊，叶黑啊，先和我们聊聊四点一版本的模式任务好了。好，先问一下大伟哥，还记得四点零相关的版本剧情吗？有印象，不过还是叶黑啊，帮我们简单回顾一下吧。没问题，我们初到枫丹时，就协助宁宁、纳维亚他们解决了几宗案件。但其实最后都汇聚到了一个案件上，也就是少女连环失踪案。而且在此期间，舆论中的执行官疯子，还有一不明的原因被审判送进了梅洛彼得堡。没错，看到这里的时候，我就在想啊，被审判的可是舆论中的执行官啊，怎么看也不是一件小事，舆论中应该不会坐视不管吧？是不是会有新的执行官因此登场呢？大伟哥很敏锐啊，没错，在四点一版本中。互相为枫丹的执行官出任，为了处理这起外交事件，也前来与水神弗林娜以及最高审判官纳维莱特会面了。哦，这场面想想就很精彩。那是必然的，而且仆人提出的几个方案其实都被婉拒了。这么一听啊，感觉火药味很浓啊。是有那么一点，不过最终纳维莱特还是答应派人前去梅洛比德堡确认公子的情况，这才暂且压下了这股火药味。我猜猜。所以这个任务就落到了我们旅行者的肩上，是吧？没错，为了让我们顺利融入梅洛彼得堡，贴心的纳维莱特先生给我们安排了一个小小的罪名。哦，对，这里就得简单提一下梅洛彼得堡的设定了，因为梅洛彼得堡并不是简单枫丹监狱这一个概念，它名义上并不隶属于枫丹的司法体系，一直都是以自治的形式而存在，所以纳维莱特才需要让我们伪装成囚犯下去调查。这次潜入的任务啊，看上去还挺新鲜的。在四点一版本中呢，枫丹的魔神任务第三幕向深水中的晨星和第四幕浴室胎动的中年之客也将会开启。旅行者需要在梅洛彼得堡暗中调查一系列的事件，以及追寻公子的行踪。值得一提的是，这个过程中旅行者会得到一些老朋友的帮助，也会遇到一些新的面孔，比如梅洛彼得堡的公爵莱欧斯利以及护士长西格文。展开一系列的冒险故事，各位旅行者们，请敬请期待呀！看起来啊，四点一版本的故事重心都是在梅洛彼得堡呀。旅行者啊，如果想要在这里调查，我猜一定会与梅洛彼得堡的最高负责人莱欧斯利进行一番斗智斗勇。叶黑啊，不妨具体为我们介绍一下这位公爵呢？作为梅洛彼得堡的管理人，莱欧斯利确实很勇于献丑，既能照顾得到弱势的群体，也能镇得住强势的恶棍。在他上位后，实施了一系列的改变，让梅洛彼得堡运作的焕然一新。也正是因为如此，梅洛彼得堡并不是像大家所想的那样如监狱一般，甚至有一些刑满释放的罪人都不愿意离开了。听你这么一说啊，这位公爵可真是不得了啊！不过啊，梅洛彼得堡作为全枫丹罪人的流放地啊，只有高超的管理手腕，我感觉可能不够，想必他也拥有令人信服的实力吧？没错，作为犯人的流放聚居地。梅洛彼得堡多多少少总会有一些不服从管理的犯人，这时候道理讲不通，就只能通过其他方法以理服人了。而莱欧斯利自然也不缺乏这方面的实力，由于莱欧斯利之前当过地下拳手，因此拥有高超的战斗技巧。这种战斗方式啊，倒也确实符合我对他的想象。在这种情势复杂的地方，拳头有时候才是硬道理嘛。搏击意味着力量的碰撞。但也常有故意卖弄破绽给对方，然后猛然回击的表现。作为一个冰元素的法器使用者，莱欧斯利的普通攻击和重击都能造成冰元素的伤害，元素战绩则会强化他的普通攻击，同时损失生命值。不过不用担心，这些损失的生命值正是他用来引诱对手进攻和抓住观众眼球的关键啊！在莱欧斯利的生命值较低时，他的重击则会被大幅的强化。并在命中敌人后大量恢复自身的生命值。看完他的技能啊，我能够感受到他独特的战斗方式了。占据优势时对敌人穷追猛打，然后故意卖出自己的破绽，让敌人觉得有机可乘。之后啊，在危机时一发逆转玩弄敌人。大卫哥的描述可真是生动形象啊
，他的战斗方式与他的处事风格可谓十分的相似。此外，莱欧斯利也非常擅长调度资源，在合成武器突破素材时，莱欧斯利也有一定概率会获得双倍的产出。这位公爵大人可真是多才多艺啊！管理、战斗，样样精通，真是太厉害了。没错，不过虽然莱欧斯利做事很有一套手段，但梅洛彼得堡毕竟是建立在枫丹的水下。常年见不到阳光，在监狱的阴暗角落里，依然会有邪恶在滋生。在四点一版本中，莱欧斯利的传说任务“手御犬之章”也将上线，旅行者可以在任务中进行了解。A word of advice: Don't break the law.、Oh, is there anything else?、Uh, yeah, seriously, don't break the law. A moment, please. Perhaps we could take a walk by a riverbank or somewhere similarly fluid. Hmm. Silence. Be sanctified. Four点一版本上线的另一位角色，则是枫丹的最高审判官纳维莱特。相信大伟哥一定不会陌生吧？嗯，我对纳维莱特印象非常深刻，他在审判时啊公正无私，而且实力非常强大，给人一种深不可测
，这会自动吸收前方区域内的盐水基金，恢复它的生命值，并缩短蓄力所需的时间。此外，当纳维莱特处于队伍中时，队伍中自己的角色进行水下冲刺的移动速度也会得到提升。纳维莱特攻击方式啊，还真是简明直观，灵敏，但又不失优雅。那么两位新角色的情况，我们也都初步了解了。我们接下来再为大家介绍一下新版本的活动起源安排吧。相信肯定很多旅行者已经等候多时了。好呀，在四点一版本中，纳维莱特与胡桃将会在第一期活动起源中出现，并提升获取概率。在第二期活动起源中，除了新朋友莱欧斯利外，我们的老朋友温迪也将迎来复刻，并获得概率二。值得一提的是，胡桃和温迪。也会在这个版本的活动中与大家见面了，更多信息也会由我的同事稍后为大家揭晓。同时，新版本还会有一些新的武器加入到武器活动起源中。感谢叶黑，呃，那么在给大家带来新伙伴的信息之后呢，还请大家休息片刻，看一下地则兑换码。之后啊，我们还会给大家带来新版本的场景地图情报，精彩继续哦。Happy anniversary, Genshin Impact! Erica Harlicker, voice of Venti here, wishing you a happy anniversary! Me and a few of my fellow voice actors have decided to celebrate by sharing some Genshin-inspired treats. I'll be making a Mondstadt-inspired twist on an autumn classic, an apple cider float. The best part about this recipe is that it doesn't need any fancy kitchen gadgets, so just get rid of those. All you need is a good saucepan and the ingredients listed here. If you're a younger traveler, make sure there's an adult around to help you with this, okay? First, let's prepare our spices. Start by zesting your orange. Next, pour your favorite non-alcoholic apple cider into a medium saucepan. If you don't have cider, unsweetened apple juice works just as well. Then toss in your spices along with the orange zest and set your stove to medium high. Once it starts to bubble, reduce to medium low and let it simmer for 15 minutes. When you can smell the aroma of warm spices, take it off the heat and remove your spices with a fine mesh strainer and leave it to sit for another 10 minutes or until just warm enough to handle. Then pour into your favorite heat safe cup. On its own, this is a drink worth singing praises, but we're going to add a scoop of vanilla ice cream, a dollop of whipped cream and fresh grated cinnamon, lifting it to new heights. We're using vanilla ice cream, but if you really want to let your Mondstadt spirit soar, you're free to use other flavors like cinnamon, pecan, chai spice, or even pandan. Light and creamy, sweet and spiced, this float is a duet of duality. Mmm, that's good. 
Happy anniversary, Genshin Impact! What's an anniversary party without some warm, gooey, cheesy goodness? Hey folks, I'm Damon Mills, the voice of Linny. And I'm Anaris Quinones, the voice of Lynette. Today, we'll be celebrating with a classic, Brie on Kroot. Don't let the fancy name fool you. This dish is surprisingly easy to make. All you need is some Brie, store-bought puff pastry, and your favorite fillings. We'll be using bacon, walnuts, and apricots for ours. The full list of ingredients is right here. After preheating your oven, dice the bacon into small pieces. Then, toss it into a pan over medium heat, cooking it until it turns crispy. Chop the nuts and dried apricots into fine pieces. Then mix them in a bowl with your crisp bacon, and resist the urge to eat this stuff by itself. Next, place your puff pastry onto a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Cut the brie in half horizontally and place one half of your brie on top with the cut half facing up. Top the cut brie with your fruity, nutty bacon mix and top with the other half of brie, kind of like a sandwich. If you have any extra, just lay it in a circle around your brie. Use your beaten egg to coat the pastry. Then fold it up over the top of your brie like you're wrapping a present. You want to completely cover the brie with no gaps in the pastry. Twist the top and pinch it shut, removing the excess pastry dough. Finally, coat the pastry's exterior in your egg wash and bake until golden brown and flaky. Cheesy, savory, and a little bit sweet, Brie en Clout is perfect for sharing. And the best part is that you can fill it with just about anything. Try it with rosemary and figs, caramelized onion and ham, or if you're really daring, sweet chili pepper, green onion, and lob chong. Like a good magician, it's versatile, elegant, deceptively simple, and best enjoyed before it disappears. Oh, that reminds me. Who's bringing dessert? Don't worry. I called in some experts. Welcome back. 那么今天啊，我也有幸再次邀请到了我们的场景美术同学阿汤哥，来为我们介绍相应的内容。李群怎么好？很高兴能够再次来到今天的节目现场，我是原神场景美术阿汤哥，今天也会为大家着重介绍
巨子艾德温·伊斯丁豪斯生前设计了拥有抵消重力效果的实验性场地发生装置，但最终发生了事故，并未能取得应有的成效。这台实验性场地发生装置也因此失控，停驻在科学院的旧址某处。在旅行者们与它遭遇并陷入苦战时，记得利用它提供的失重效果进行跳跃，从而规避它的招式。哎，他的攻击方式啊，确实和之前遇到的敌人不太一样，感觉很有意思。看来我们的战斗中啊，要多利用他的机制了。没错，这部为了搜索关于枫丹科学院爆炸的各种情报，女人众也来到了这一带。旅行者在这里将会遇到新的敌人——女人众双翼人和女人众风翼人。他们来自隶属于仆人的精锐特务组织，拥有不俗的实力。可能会给旅行者们带来不小的麻烦。嗯，看来这片新区域啊，危险与机遇并存，旅行者们可要小心了哦。那么介绍完地上的区域，这次阿汤哥又给我们带来哪些关于水下的情报呢？自然是有的。接下来我来再着重讲一下梅洛彼得堡，它与四点一的主线剧情十分密切。在枫丹惩治犯人的方法，就是将其流放至梅洛彼得堡。这里看似监狱，本质上却被认定为流放者的聚集地。在这可以参加劳作，得到生活的物资。整个梅洛彼得堡建设在水下，其隐蔽的结构多以蒸汽管道和齿轮为主。本身略带精致的工业风也衬托着这里是个威严的地方。我们利用多种竖管道结构，并且尝试了多种排列组合，参考了一些常见的蒸汽浮克元素。提炼出属于枫丹水下监狱的异域特性，想给初次到达这里的旅行者们留下深刻的印象。嗯，的确如你所说，给我留下了深刻的印象。不过，作为全枫丹罪人的流放场所，它内部的设施数量想必不止如此吧？在梅洛彼得堡下方，还有一处制造着各种机关的工厂，那里就是流放者们平时劳作的地方了。在继承上方区域的蒸汽管道元素的同时，设计团队围绕着重复劳作和流水线的设计语言，借鉴了多种装置艺术中运用的表达形式，在设计中用重复的环形轨道，强调着流水线式的重复感。我们将一部分环形轨道放置于厂房的顶部，视觉上巨大的矩阵环形结构也能够给人更强的压迫感。如何让这些精密的齿轮繁而不乱？我们团队也费了不少心思。能看得出来，虽然是枫丹关押犯人的场所，但我已经等不及去里面探索一番了。在梅洛彼得堡附近，也有不少可以自由探索的区域。这里，我向旅行者们介绍一处很隐蔽的水下洞穴。此处被史基矿所影响，产生了奇异的生态景象。旅行者在潺潺中穿梭时，会遇到不小的挑战哦。哎，这非常符合我对水下世界的幻想，各种神秘的区域和奇异的植被啊，总能激发我的探索欲望。不过，在这片新的探索区域，想必我们也会遇到一些新的敌人吧？大伟哥猜的没错，矗立在远海异种顶端的另一位霸主，自泡泡海马成长而来的顶尖掠食者——千年珍珠俊灵，就潜藏在这片区域的某个岩窟之中。它进化出了幻兽的情丝。头部下方的异海珍珠，更是浓缩了镭元素的结晶，让它能够使用更加猛烈的元素攻击，也拥有更强的防御能力。此外，在探索水下区域时，我们还会遇到执行警戒、巡弋任务的新型发条机关，旅行者们也要小心哦。感谢阿汤哥啊，听完你的讲解啊，让我对新版本更加期待了。一下子看了那么多内容啊，想必大家也有些累了，不如让我们稍作休息。接下来啊，我们还邀请了其他研发组的同学为我们带来更多的内容分享。各位旅行者，不要走开哦。Happy anniversary, Genshin Impact. Impact! I'm Brittany Cox, or as you might know me, Der Prinzessin herself, Fischl. With me are my loyal subjects. Ben Pronsky, voice of Oz, main Fräulein. And Josie Montana McCoy, voice of Kaya. Not a subject, but happy to help anyways. Today we'll be celebrating Genshin's anniversary by making chocolate ganache tarts. 
<laughs> a royally decadent dish for such an occasion. In our princess's benevolence, we've included a list of ingredients here. First, gather your chocolate cookies in a food processor or plastic bag. Then, crush them like your enemies until not but the finest crumble remains. Then mix with sugar and melted butter. Stir until you have a consistency like wet sand. Firmly press your crumbs into the bottom and sides of a pie tin. Then bake in an oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 Celsius for 20 minutes or until it's dry and firm. Once the crust is cooled, coat the interior with a layer of raspberry jam. For the filling, simply bring your cream to a bare simmer. Then pour it over a heat safe bowl filled with your chocolate along with a pinch of salt and a half teaspoon of espresso powder. Let the hot cream stand for about a minute and stir it all together until you have a ganache as smooth as Kaya himself. Pour the ganache into your tart shell and allow it to firm up in the fridge before crowning it with a royal arrangement of raspberries. And for an optional flourish, try watering down some raspberry jam with a bit of lemon juice or warm water until you have a thin glaze, then brush it over your raspberries. This will lend your berries an iridescent shimmer. While darkly regal as a certain princessin, this tart is also quite flexible. You can substitute raspberry for orange marmalade and candied citrus, or mix the jam and top with hazelnut praline for a treat that's perfect with coffee. And if you don't want to worry about slicing your tart, substitute the large pan for parchment-lined muffin tins to make perfectly portioned miniature tarts. Mm. Truly a dish fit for royalty. <clears throat> now, who gets the first slice?欢迎大家回到原神自恋一百本的前瞻特别节目 Helen,听说这次在离月举办的活动和往年不太一样啊,要不你先来为我们介绍一下? 
，就是那场胡桃做东，文笔和钟离均有出席啊，甚至连降魔大圣萧都在场的饭局吧，那可真是藏龙卧虎。没错，这个饭局的许多细节都让人会心一笑，也让温笔和林月的众人相识。胡桃和温笔还做下了承诺，将来有空一起写诗。这不，正巧让他们逮到一个机会。由胡桃与温迪牵头，在石门附近举行了两国合办的诗歌大会，交流诗歌的同时，促进两国关系和谐友善发展。希望在诗歌中让大家感受节日的氛围。啊，我当时以为他们只是开玩笑而已，没想到他们来真的、啊。不过，温迪作为吟游诗人，他的创作水平应该相当高啊。而胡桃的打油诗也独具一格嘛。不仅仅是他们。还有来自黎月和蒙德的其他伙伴也一起参加了大会，十分热闹。不过，在活动期间发生了一件奇异的事：身为参赛者的重云提出，自己之前见到了一个类似妖邪的东西。于是，众人在参加大会的同时，也开始探寻起了事件的真相。诗歌大会举办的那么隆重，想必与之相关的活动也很丰富吧？这次。我们为旅行者们准备了三个特色活动玩法，分别是百步理智、灵感喷击和寻底壁画。在百步理智玩法中，旅行者可以投出掷剑，在限定时间内用掷剑尽可能多的命中熔壶，从而获得更高的积分。在挑战的过程中，会出现礼环和妙壶。如果投掷的掷剑穿过礼环，击中熔壶。即可获得双倍积分。妙壶则可以改变掷剑的投掷频率，帮助旅行者更高效地完成挑战。第二个活动是挑战玩法——灵感喷击。在挑战开始后，旅行者打倒敌人可以获得灵感结晶。挑战中有时会出现携带迷思元结的敌人，极为坚韧，难以击倒。灵感结晶每隔一段时间会在角色身边引发一定范围的冲击波，造成巨量伤害。如果能灵活运用灵感结晶的冲击波，或许能轻松打倒这类敌人。寻景秘画则是一个通过拍照来寻找缺失景物的玩法。根据提示，旅行者需要帮助画作修复师通过拍照修复画作，在拍照时将画片与当前景物对照。寻找画片上缺失的景物，找到后即可将对应景物记录下来，并获得奖励。在本次油水运诗集活动中，旅行者们可以参与三个活动挑战，提升诗歌会热度，从而获取专属四星法器《无垠蔚蓝之歌》，及其专属精炼道具等丰富奖励。这次的活动还真是丰富啊，尤其是百步理智活动啊。让我想起了小时候经常玩的这个投壶游戏，这次啊，我也可以在游戏中再体验一把了。是啊，希望这次的活动能让旅行者们感受到诗歌大会欢快的氛围，与蒙德和黎月的大家一起度过令人难忘的时光。说到蒙德，可丽又活跃了起来呢。怎么？难道可丽又因为炸鱼被秦团长抓了吗？可丽这次可不是闯祸，反而立功了。他在游玩的过程中。偶然发现国舅湖里突然出现了从须弥来的入侵鱼类，为了维持生态平衡，骑士团需要处理这些入侵物种。在此期间，可丽为了不添乱，只能待在蒙德城里。为了不让可丽无聊，丽莎发明了一个有趣的小游戏，在活动“嘟嘟可轰轰奇遇记”中，旅行者们可以陪同可丽一起玩蹦蹦炸弹。通过操作嘟嘟可投出不同类型的蹦蹦炸弹，击败小小鱼霸君，书写嘟嘟可打败鱼鱼入侵者的大冒险。火花骑士就像火热的小太阳一样，每次都能给我们带来惊喜呀、啊！这次竟然还发现了入侵物种。其实有类似困扰的不只是蒙德，在枫丹也有一些本应只存在于实验室内的奇妙生物，突然出现在枫丹的各个水域中。旅行者可以通过极光劫彩活动，帮助为此事忙得焦头烂额的商人西肖恩，通过回收枫丹水下各处的荧光紫水母，消除生态隐患并获取奖励。保护生态
，还能欣赏枫丹水下风光，真是一举两得呀。是的，在枫丹苍鹰区东南侧的水岸处，我们还可以体验到挑战活动——人生的波峰与波谷。在这个挑战活动中，旅行者可以帮助枫丹研究员测试超高压冲击器，通过合理把握停止增压的时机。提高超高压冲击器释放的超高压冲击波的伤害，来击败敌人。同时，旅行者可以根据出战队伍的角色数量和等级获取载客，用来装配更高等级的增密模组，挑战更高难度的敌人。在 4.1 版本中，除了常规的热斗模式更新，七圣召唤的注进演练也将再次开放。旅行者可以选择不同的附加条件。获取积分来领取奖励。最后，在四点一版本，我们还会开启星空吟咏活动，需要培养角色的旅行者们不要错过哦。辛苦研发组的同学给我们准备了那么多有趣的活动，看得我都眼花缭乱了，已经迫不及待想去试玩一番了。另一方面，我们也一直在关注旅行者们的日常游玩状况。随着游戏运营年份增长，一些原本看起来合理的前期和常规设计，如今却成为了旅行者们体验中的痛点。因此，我们在 4.1 版本对前期的内容设计做了部分调整。首先，我们加强了冒险等阶突破任务的提示，在旅行者们的派蒙界面和冒险手册向导页。都增加了相应的引导。在突破任务中，我们缩短了地图的通关耗时，移除了部分高难度敌人，来帮助新手旅行者更好地完成突破任务。这个好，其实啊，当初我第一次做突破任务时啊，确实用了挺长的时间啊。这次的调整啊，应该能帮助到不少的旅行者。不仅如此，我们还对每日委托做了一次重大调整。随着游戏内容逐渐丰富。在每日委托之外，游戏内还有大量玩法等着旅行者体验。因此，我们在 4.1 版本推出了冒险历练系统。在这个系统中，旅行者可以通过完成任务、开启宝箱、获取收集物、参与活动的方式来获取历练点。除了原本的通过完成每日委托获得奖励，旅行者也可以通过累积历练点来换取委托奖励。每天通过两种方式累计，最多领取四次委托奖励。每日委托奖励被领取后，仍可进行任务。想要体验任务或者完成成就的旅行者，可以继续去完成这些委托。历练点将在服务器时间每天的凌晨四点清零。太棒了！我很早就喜欢有类似的系统呢。当开启新区域或者活动时啊，总感觉要做的事情太多啊，自己时间不够用。那现在有了这个功能啊，我在体验其他内容的同时啊，还能够获得委托奖励，真可谓是一举两得啊！没错，我们也希望旅行者们可以更多的享受游戏中的其他内容，得到多元化的体验。除了版本活动与系统优化，在公测三周年之际啊，我们依旧为旅行者们准备了一些神秘的奖励，来庆祝这个特殊的日子。h e l 也来为大家分享一下情报吧。为了感谢旅行者们一直以来的支持与热爱，在 4.1 版本期间，签到活动“欢赏刘华”将会开启。旅行者们可以通过每日签到，获得最多十枚纠缠之源以及其他道具奖励，不容错过。同时，我们还会通过邮件的形式为旅行者们额外奉上总共一千六百元石和四个脆弱树枝，以及两个特殊地面小道具。便携式空气动力标志炮升发器和柔柔小章。此外，在 4.1 版本更新后，游戏内商城的手充双倍状态也将会重置。具体信息，旅行者们可以留意官方后续的相关公告。好耶！相信大家已经和我一样，十分期待 4.1 版本的到来了。那介绍完了那么多的活动啊，屏幕前的大家不妨稍作休息。接下来啊，还有更多有趣的内容，后面的节目更加精彩。
Happy anniversary, Genshin Impact! My name is Ben Balmaceda, and as the voice of Kaveh, I'm always looking for better ways to integrate artistic expression and practical functionality. I'm so happy to be celebrating the three-year anniversary of Genshin Impact. We know fans are celebrating worldwide, but what's a party without decorations? Well, inspired by the enchanting landscapes of Tevat, here's a fun and functional craft that can really add a mystical vibe to a celebration in a matter of minutes. If you have any mason jars lying around, they can easily be transformed into fantastical yet functional lanterns. All you need is some small battery-powered LED lights, art supplies, and some creative thinking. Decorate the glass with glitter for a nebula jar, or make your own designs inspired by the world of Tevat with colorful paper, paint, string, or even maple leaves. And place the LED lights, like a battery-powered tea light or fairy light, inside the mason jar. The light will pass through the different shapes and colors to give it a unique and enchanting glow. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And the fun doesn't stop there. Jenny has another DIY project that can add a lot of color to any Genshin-themed celebration. Ain't that right, Jenny? Hey, that's right! I'm Jenny Okabori, wishing all the fans and players a very happy third year anniversary! Well, as the voice of Yoimiya, you know I have a soft spot for colorful, bursting light displays, and we can easily make our own decorations by turning the average balloon into explosive slimes! All you need is a couple of colorful balloons, confetti, and some art supplies. Take your deflated balloon and fill it with either homemade or store-bought confetti. A funnel can really come in handy here. Next, use a balloon pump to inflate the balloon. Regular air allows them to bounce around the room, but if you want a floating Enemo slime, you'll need to use helium. Shape the slime into a sphere by letting out a little air and tie off the end. Then, go ahead and add some white eyes and any other details you'd like to give the slime a personality. You can use white paint or paper for these eyes. Now, not only do you have some fun slime balloon decorations, but when they pop, they'll explode in a burst of colorful confetti condensate. These balloons and starlight jar decorations can level up any Genshin party as we celebrate this three-year achievement. I look forward to seeing what you create! Michael,现在今天这个机会 Samuzu 都有着原神研发团队持续的复苏和深厚的感情这里汇聚了各种文化、创意、艺术附近一间获取的武器 
对于一些要向美术、策划、海外本地化团队表达的设定，也需要撰写足够细腻、详尽的文档以供参考。因此，在游戏内所呈现的内容，大概也只是浮在创作海洋的一角冰山。确实啊，这个数字不仅是代表一场游戏的这个制作啊，更是一次文化的积淀，一次创意的训练。当然，海量的文本创作也只是《原神》内容的其中一个侧写。下面这个数字看起来可小多了，但它也是我们和旅行者一路走来的证明之一呢。七十四，比起第一个数字啊，这个数字是有点小的。哎，不对不对。Michael， 你说这是我们跟旅行者一路走来的见证，那它一定是一个随着版本累积下来的数字，对不对？大伟哥已经快要猜到了。其实啊，这是直到四点一版本为止，包括刚才我的同事介绍的纳维莱特和莱欧斯利在内，《原神》已经向旅行者推出的角色数量。没想到啊，在不知不觉间啊，我们已经邂逅了那么多的这个角色伙伴。不过啊，谈起《原神》呢，游戏中性格迥异的角色。确实被大家津津乐道。没错，一个引人入胜的开放世界，角色是必不可少的。《原神》中的每一个角色都有着独特的背景故事和情感世界。通过对话、剧情和任务呈现，旅行者能够更加深刻地了解角色。这种情感共鸣不仅让旅行者与角色建立起情感联系，也为游戏增添了更多层次的情感体验，使整个游戏世界更加丰满和有趣。此外，角色也是构成游戏中战斗体验的重要一环。每个角色都拥有独特的战斗技能和神之眼元素，这不仅丰富了游戏的战斗策略，也为旅行者们提供了更多的选择和挑战。呃，正因为这些角色伙伴啊，才让皮瓦特大陆的世界增色不少，使得游戏啊不仅仅是简单的战斗和探索，更像是一场情感丰富的冒险之旅。哎，那么让我们看看下一个数字吧。呃，经历了之前的两个数字啊，我觉得自己是肯定猜不出来的。Michael， 快为我们公布答案吧。其实这个数字还有一个单位，二百一十五 G， 它指的是截止四点一版本游戏内所有最高精度美术的资源总量。二百一十五 G 啊，这个大小是有点吓人啊。Michael， 你给我们讲一讲背后的故事吧。可能大多数旅行者不太能判断这个数字所代表的工作量。《原神》是一个依赖卡通渲染、营造幻想氛围的游戏，这就意味着几乎所有的写实类素材，包括照片修改的贴图、真人动物的动画，都是没有办法直接应用到游戏中的。这二百一十五 G 的美术资源是《原神》的原画师、建模师、动画师、特效师等同学们，经过精心构思或实地取材，然后重新亲手制作出来的。是啊。有的时候我晚上路过美术同学的工作区啊，发现有些同学还在工作，还挺过意不去的。但同学们这么辛苦啊，平时还是会非常自豪的给我转发他们最近画的新场景啊、新角色，就像是介绍自己的孩子一样兴奋。但是啊，大家非常努力创作的同时，也需要考虑到玩家的设备是否能承载这样庞大的资源量。所以我们的技术团队面对如此规模的资源，也是付出了相当大的精力。对不同的设备、不同平台进行性能评估和分级，对资源进行不同等级的精度拆分和管理，优化加载和包体构建策略。其实最近我们看到不少的旅行者留言，觉得枫丹版本的包体占用空间依旧是太大了。对此，我们也是深知做得还不够，之后会进一步探索其他的优化手段，给大家带来更好的体验。辛苦各位研发的同学们了。刚才我们看到的是《原神》游戏内的一些有趣数字，那么接下来这组数字就跟屏幕前的各位有些关系了。哎，这个数字啊，我有些想法。迈克，你既然提到和屏幕前的大家有关，我猜猜，是不是《原神》全球玩家的关注数呢？没错，目前《原神》全网的关注数已经超过了九千九百五十三万人了。好耶！不过说实话，虽然猜对了，但是这个数字啊，依旧让我十分惊讶。在当初立项的时候啊，我们可能都没有想到能取得今天这样的成绩啊。有那么多的旅行者走上了皮瓦特的大陆，与我们共同创造美好的回忆。是的
。这个数字是旅行者们对我们原神团队的认可，也是最好的回报。同时，也督促我们不能懈怠，因为我们承载着旅行者们的期望。话不多说，让我们继续。这个数字让我看得有点懵了，实在是过于庞大了。我随便猜猜啊，这是不是播放量或者点赞数什么的？看来大伟哥对这类数据啊特别的敏锐。这是原神发布的官方视频内容，在全网社区的总播放量，目前已经达到了四十亿次。其实，在这一些内容创作的过程中，我们同样遇到了非常多的困难。如何更好地把游戏内容通过视频形式展示给大家，并不是一件容易的事情。每当创作同学觉得疲惫或者没有灵感的时候，看看各位旅行者在评论区对内容的支持，就又会充满干劲了。而结果也是如此，只要我们创作出优质的内容，我们就一定会获得回报。是啊，旅行者们的支持与热爱啊，正是我们创作的动力啊。接下来，让我们分享最后一组数据。不知道屏幕前的旅行者们有没有猜到呢？既然已经到了这个环节的最后，我就不卖关子了。开服至今，原神官方每个版本都会举行相关的视频二创活动。这个数字是目前全网参与的总人数，迄今为止已经达到了一千一百五十万了。嗯，有趣的是啊，这个大数字啊，一点都不让我意外。其实啊，原神能够取得今天的成果啊，光靠我们研发团队肯定是远远不够的。各位旅行者提供的优质二创内容啊，让原神在游戏之外的地方也散发着自己的光彩，营造了良好的讨论氛围。这份美好也传递给了更多的小伙伴，加入到皮娃分的冒险中啊。是啊，其实这些只是参与了视频二创活动的人数，还有许多其他内容形式的二创作者，同样制作了精彩的内容，给大家带来了不少的快乐。虽然未能记录，但依旧感谢你们的支持。好的。那感谢 Michael 为我们带来的数据啊，也希望以上的数据能让旅行者们对原神项目组的研发团队有更加深入的了解。那在接下来的日子里啊，我也希望可以和旅行者们继续携手前行，共同创造更加精彩的回忆。那么接下来将为大家呈上第三则兑换码，让我们稍后再见。欢迎大家回到四点一版本的前瞻特别节目，在新版本啊，除了游戏内丰富多彩的内容啊，我们也准备了一些游戏外的内容给大家带来分享。没错，今天我还给大家带来了《原神》的交响音乐会最新情报。二零二三年九月到二零二四年一月期间，我们将在亚洲、美洲、欧洲的十一座城市举办音乐会，首站将于九月二十九日和九月三十日在上海梅赛德斯奔驰文化中心举行。欢迎世界各地的旅行者前来体验。同时，音乐会主题的系列周边已经在原神旗舰店等官方店铺开售，有兴趣的旅行者不妨看看哦。哇哦，这些周边看上去好精致啊！我这就回去加入购物车。其实还有很多音乐会的周边单品，我已经替大家都看过实物了，可以说是非常让人期待。不过，在不同地区，因为生产和运力的关系，周边内容的获取方式会略有差异。少数的地区存在延迟或非全品类上架的情况，这还请大家谅解。大家如果感兴趣的话，可以关注官方社媒账号，了解更多关于音乐会的详细信息。除此之外，
后续游戏内也会上下音乐会礼包，侠音易送。礼包内含有原石、名片、风之翼以及家具摆设。上架时间等具体信息，大家也可以关注官方消息。Michael 啊，自从四点零前瞻节目啊，我们发布了枫丹交响音乐的现场，就收获了不少好评，许多旅行者都等着枫丹专辑上架呢。不瞒大伟哥，其实我已经循环了好多遍了。而今天带来的下一则情报，正是关于枫丹音乐专辑的。随着旅行者们不断探索枫丹的步伐，我们的枫丹音乐也一直陪伴在大家冒险的旅途之中。四点一版本期间，我们将发布枫丹第一张 OST 专辑《白鹿彻鸣之泉》。专辑共有四张分碟。收录了 Hoyo Mix 音乐团队为《原神》的枫丹地区创作的原声音乐，手中的红酒杯已经开始摇起来了。大伟哥，你印象中最深的枫丹音乐是哪一首呢？我最喜欢啊一首枫丹的战斗音乐啊，每次听的时候都舍不得结束战斗。我也很喜欢呢、啊，枫丹的战斗音乐展示了枫丹华丽的城邦特色。我们为枫丹音乐专辑也准备了一支华丽的宣传 MV， 一起来看看吧。
中间那一小段 Flamingo 舞的彩蛋可太对味了。看完这次 MV 啊，我对松丹专辑更加期待了。是的，松丹音乐的制作幕后将会在专辑上架后呈现给各位旅行者。期待 h o y o u n Mix 团队的同学能给我们带来更多有关松丹音乐的创作和设计方面的介绍。其实我们团队一直都在致力给旅行者们带来更丰富、更有趣的体验，无论是线上还是线下、啊，都能够感受到皮瓦特大陆的美好。那希望我们准备的这些游戏外的衍生内容啊，能给大家带来一些小小的惊喜。Anniversary Genshin Impact. This is Maya Aoki Tuttle reporting. Of course, you might know me as Charlotte, Ace Reporter. And with the upcoming anniversary, I've decided to put my journalistic skills to the test. And what better way than to get the scoop on the voice artists for some of our favorite characters? Therefore, Ace Reporter Maya is on the case. With me are my co-hosts Damon Mills and Anaris Kinones. Greetings. Hey, everybody. The world of Tavat sports a diverse cast, so let's hear about what all the talent has to say. For those that live too long, the friends of days gone by and scenes from their adventures live on in their memories. As such, I have no regrets in meeting you, friend. Should the day ever come that we are not together, you will continue to shine like gold in my memories. Hello, everyone. My name is Keith Silverstein. I voice the Geo Archon Zhongling. Happy anniversary, Genshin Impact! I want to take a second to thank everyone who had a part in bringing Genshin Impact to life, and I mean everyone.、Uh, no matter how large or small your role in bringing this game to life has been, and that includes the entire Genshin Impact community, which is amazing that I could even just say that. It's a very special thing. When a game comes out and is so popular that an entire community is born alongside it, and so long as it's bringing this much joy to the world, long may it reign. Hi, I'm Alejandro Sab, and I am the voice of Sino in Genshin Impact. Do you have an anniversary message you'd like to share? I'd like to thank the Academy. No, <laughs> no, I'm all serious. In all seriousness, um. I am grateful to be a part of this game and、uh, Genshin going on for three years. I've been a fan, and this last year getting to be a part of it was super, like just super humbling. Super, I, I, I'm at a loss for words because Sino was the character when I first saw him in the Tavat trailer. I was like, "Dang, I'd really like to play that guy. That'd be so cool." And it, it, it happened, and it it was just so cool, and I. It just makes me really happy again to the opportunity to be this guy.、Uh, everybody thinks I've been saying terrible jokes now because of Sino, but that's not true. I started saying terrible jokes because of my partner and、uh, my friends around me. I could say one right now.、Uh, hello, I'm Sean Dury, and I play Baiju. Do you have an anniversary message you'd like to share? Well, happy anniversary to Genshin Impact, and I just want to thank everyone who has been playing the game and enjoying the game. That's really why we make it,、uh, so you can have fun playing it. So thank you so much for being a part of it. My favorite Genshin memory of the past year was Baiju becoming a playable character. That was so exciting to go from someone you kind of stopped in and chatted with for a second to someone who is going on a quest and saving the day. So that's absolutely my favorite memory of the past year. Hey there, my name is Nazee Tarsha, and I play All Hate Them in Genshin Impact. What is your favorite story from the past year? The infamous traitor, traitor, Azar, anger scene that All Hate Them has,、uh, just because it was really fun seeing the reception to that, and it was very fun recording. You know, it's All Hate Them is very reserved, very kind of to himself. So having this one moment where he breaks character. Putting on an act, of course, but still, like showing more emotion than anyone has ever seen him do, was very fun to kind of go into. In terms of the game, the thing that I want to say is congratulations for going, you know, three plus years strong. the The world that they've managed to build is nothing short of impressive, and also seeing the sort of fans' admiration toward the game is. You know, nothing short of delightful, really, because there is just such an enthusiasm and such a passion with the fan base. So seeing this sort of 
relationship between the two is endearing and the fact that I get to, you know, kind of share in both of these experiences is awesome. Hey, what's up? I'm Zach Gordon. I am the voice of Tainari. If I have one anniversary message, it's I can't wait till the next year and the year after that. And I hope to be around for uh, as long as we all enjoy the game. So thank you. What is something you like or admire about your character? One thing that, if I may say so myself, I, I feel like we worked really hard to do well was his ability to care about Kale. And, and I think that a lot of people that really know what they believe in and, and feel that they're very intelligent, quote unquote, I think sometimes the ego can get in the way of that. And one thing that I really admire about Tainari is that he's able to put that aside and, and really focus on what matters, which is being able to articulate and, and translate what he knows and pass it on to uh, a student or an apprentice, somebody like Kale. And so I think to sum it all up, compassion. I think Tainari is a very compassionate individual. We certainly tried our best to infuse that into the role. My name is Ben Balmaceda. I voice Kave. Do you have an anniversary message you'd like to share? After seeing Genshin when it first came out, I had no doubt that it was going to be something special and it was going to stand the test of time. There's so much potential to be had in Tevat and like so many new people to meet and, and places to explore and travel to. The game's just a gem and like as far as people that have helped me get this far like I just want to thank all my friends that are part of the cast all the Sumeru crew Meru um, and also to all the fans like they've been so lovely and welcoming and it's such a lovely community it's just been a wonderful journey and I hope that it continues uh, far past the horizon What's up? My name is Patrick Pedraza. I'm the voice of Scaramouche, the Balladeer, Wanderer, Hat Guy, a man of many names. Well, three years, man, that's a long time. <sighs> I have no idea what the future is going to bring for the game, for me, but I'm just like, I don't want to sound cliche, but I'm really super grateful to be part of this. And now your mother. <laughs> Oh, my favorite, my favorite scene, oh gosh, there's so many. Uh, it's like the boss battle. The When I first saw the boss battle when I was doing the session, I was like, this is going to be insane. And the, the boss battle theme, oh my gosh, that was just like insane. But then I was like, oh my gosh, I saw the end and then Scaramouche just goes straight on his head, looking right at you. Poof. Yeah, <laughs> that was kind of sad, but it was kind of, uh, that was my favorite one. Hi, I'm Anyatko. I voice Red and <laughs> Sorry! And a handful of NPCs. I can't believe that Genshin Impact has been going on strong for three years, and we've got plenty more to go. I'm so excited for what the future holds for Tevat. I am just starting to explore Fontaine and getting through the Fontaine Arc Conquest, and it is so, so much fun so far. And I just really want to thank the fans, all of the travelers who have been on this journey with us for the past three years. None of this would mean anything without you guys. So thank you for playing. Thank you for loving this game. What's one of your favorite character lines? Okay, I get asked this a lot, and the answer... <laughs> is the about Ito line. Who? I just think it's so funny how in one word you get to know exactly what Raiden Shogun thinks of the one and only <laughs> Arataki Ito that never fails to make me laugh. Hi, my name is Kimberly Ann Campbell and I'm the voice of Nagita, the Dendro Archon in Genshin Impact. What was your favorite memory of the past year? Um, okay, so there are a lot, and no surprise, there are a lot to do with Nahida. But I would say that one of my favorite memories from last year would have to be when Nahida's trailer dropped. She has two trailers, but the one in particular that comes to mind is the one where she's going through her birthday over and over again. And it starts off as happy, and then it's like, oh, okay, it's still kind of happy, but then it gets really dark and like 
really depressing and even though it's like a really sad video it was like super well done and i was like oh my gosh this is so good and like seeing everybody's reactions to it like i've watched like a ton of reactions from like streamers youtubers it was like just amazing to see everybody's reaction to it i could not wait for it to come out i'm glad it turned out as well as it did well there you have it folks straight from the mouths of some of our favorite characters it's <clears throat> Isn't there someone you've forgotten? Two someones, to be exact. Oh, 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 oh I, I was totally about to get to you guys, I swear. Right, that's what I thought. Can you give us a short intro? My name is Damon Mills, and I voice Linny, the greatest magician in all Tibet. Is there anything you want to say to the community about your character? I think Linny and Lynette's story is quite fascinating because they're both incredibly fun characters and all about razzle-dazzle, but their collective past is so dark and painful. I mean, they both mask it really well, particularly Linny, who appears front-facing very confident, but he's burdened by his ties to the Batui, growing up as an orphan, kind of acting as a parent to his siblings. I feel like he was forced to grow up really fast, and I guess I can relate to that. Do you have an anniversary message you'd like to share? I still remember when Genshin first came around, and I thought it was the neatest concept. I know this game has gotten so many people through so much stuff, and I'm really excited to finally be a part of it in such a big way. It's really special to me, and I can't wait to see where the rest of the game goes. My name is Anaris Kinanis, and I am the voice of Lynette. And I actually adore cats, so this is a true honor. Is there anything you want to say to the community about your character? Yeah, uh, Lynette... Lynette is really fun for me because, you know, she is the the deadpan kind of, I guess, emotionless character archetype, but we did try to elevate her from that. Um, so it's really fun uh, trying to, you know, keep that feel, that base feel of her being deadpan, but also adding enough nuance so that she is an interesting character. Do you have an anniversary message you'd like to share? Yeah, three years, that's crazy. Um, I'm very excited. I'm excited to see future characters. I'm excited to see more Fontaine um, and more Lynette, of course. Uh, and um, yeah, I wanna thank you guys for being so supportive and stuff. Um, it's, uh, it's been a blast and I can't wait to see you guys enjoy the rest of it. There you have it, folks. For real this time. This is Ace Reporter Maya signing off. Dodgeli,这个一点前瞻节目也接近尾声了。在这充满激情和期待的时刻,我首先想代表项目组的同学们,向各位旅行者表达最真挚的谢意。感谢你们一直以来对原生的支持与厚爱。从原生上线至今,
you see you better I'm live. Okay, bye bye, have a nice day. Bye bye. Have a back a studio.